tell you where the fish are. Get in there. Ooh, that's a nice fish. Yeah, yeah man. Bam. 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 Hey everybody, Chris Schaefer with Potsky Outdoors. Today we're coming to you from the state of Virginia. We're at Kerr Lake. It's one of the largest lakes in all the southeast. It's the largest reservoir in the state of Virginia. And guess what? It holds the record for one of the largest blue catfish in the world. 143 pounds, folks. The largest catfish ever caught on hook and line. Do we think we're going to catch one today? No, here's why. We're out here today on a week that it's been pretty rough. It's springtime. We've had High barometer, low barometer, high barometer, low barometer. It's been bouncing all over the place. What does that mean? It's not good for fishing, but guess what? We're in town, we're gonna give it a try anyway. There's 850 miles of shoreline and more than 50,000 acres split between the state of Virginia and North Carolina here. What does that do? It leaves a lot of room for a lot of blue catfish. We're gonna come out here today, try to catch a big one. We're gonna hope just to get into some numbers with the weather going up and down, yo-yoing all over the place, we'll be lucky just to catch a few. We're gonna troll, that's right, you heard it right correctly, we're gonna troll for catfish. Uh, and the reason why is because of the pressure systems, because there's no definitive pattern, we have to cover a lot of water, try to find active fish. So what we're gonna be doing today, we're gonna use cut up crappie and uh, cut up shad for bait. Now we're gonna use them two different ways. We're using catfish nectar, on some of them, and you'll see that by the pink and colored meat. And we're also gonna use just fresh bait, and we're gonna compare the two and see how we do today. Now, one of the things we wanna talk about is using catfish nectar, okay? Catfish nectar is a scent, it's an additive. It's something that's used to refresh your bait, to recharge your bait, rejuvenate your bait, and also prolong the life of your bait. So rather than just pour it in there and start fishing, it's smarter if you take that bait the night before you go out there, you soak it in a Ziploc bag, zip it up, and let those cut baits marinate it. Now another thing, if you're not a guide, you're a weekend warrior, kind of like a lot of us are, go out there, get the anchovies, get the mackerel, get the shad, whatever you're buying, cut bait. Take that cut bait the night before, soak it in a bag, just like we're doing today. And what that'll do is that'll prolong the life of the bait. It'll give it even better smell. It'll make it fresher. It'll give you the ability to catch a lot of fish. We're gonna show you how easy it is to come out here, rejuvenate that bait, and make it nice and spicy for those catfish. That's a decent fish. Is it? Like 15, 20 pounds, right? Maybe 10. It's not a bad fish, dude. No, not at all. Nice. Car Lake, and we're up close to Clarksville, Virginia. And what you can usually expect uh, on an average day uh, is a dozen catfish. Um, and they'll range in size anywhere from two to, uh, if you get lucky, you can catch a 50 to 80 pounder. The world record come from Car Lake here, it was 143 pounds. Small they can't, they can't all up. be monsters. There's been several, uh, over a hundred caught this past year. Oh yeah, he's a, he's next year's fish. Or, or five years from now's fish. On an excellent day, probably the best I've ever done was 24 kits. There again, my last trip we had up here, we only caught five all day but we were lucky enough to have a 30 pounder and a 50 pounder. Uh, it's just a day-to-day -day thing. On the average, if we have a decent day, 
we're going to catch six to 12 cats and we'll have at least one most of the time from 18 to 25 pounds. And that's, uh, that's basically just the average up here. You know, some days they bite better than others, just like any other species. This one's got a big old head to him. <laughs> First catfish right there, good stuff. Got to cut them on a board. Planer board fishing catfish, definitely something I've never done, but we do for walleye and salmon, but this is cool. It separates um, your lines so you don't get tangled as much. Plus it gets them away from the boat. Uh, this lake has so much fishing pressure that uh, they get a little bit boat shy sometimes when they hear a trolling motor running. So uh, that's, that's the two main purposes, is to get a spread and to get them away from the boat. Yeah, this is a setup that I use at Car Lake. Most of the time uh, when I'm fishing Car Lake for catfish, the water temperature is over 50 degrees, I'll always drift or pull with the trolling motor. And this is the setup I use. This is actually a homemade rig I, I made out of clothesline wire. And it's pretty simple, you just got a snap swivel, and I added a little more weight on the shaft just to give it a little more weight. And one reason I use this rig, if I want to go from drifting, which this is a drifting weight, to anchoring, all I got to do is quickly unclip that, clip a three to four ounce pyramid sinker on, and I've gone from drifting to anchoring in just seconds instead of having to change the whole setup. Okay, at the other end of it, we got a swivel and your leader. The leader I use is 40 pound P-line mono. The main line is 65 pound Power Pro braid. I usually run anywhere from 18 to 24 inch leader. I use a 10 alt circle hook. I use a little cork up above it. And the way you gauge it is you want your cork closer to your hook than you do your swivel. Therefore, when this comes along on the bottom, your cork is off the bottom and hopefully your bait and your hook won't get hung up as bad. And that's basically it. Um, rod and reels I use, I have 6500 or 5500s, uh, Garcia's, I've started going to the Akuma um, spinning reels with the bait runner system on it. That seems to be the simplest and easiest reel for anybody to use. Um, but I use the same setup on those rod and reels also. Yeah, I think he's, yeah, he's running. Hooked up, baby. Good fish, good fish. Well, I fish for them year round from the April time frame when the crappie are spawning, from then right on through until July, uh, until a lot of them go up the rivers and the creeks to spawn. See, so this one's the first one taking line all day, right? Yeah, dude, he was ripping. He was ripping. After the spawn, I, I really like um, the end of October and November. Uh, they start feeding up a lot for the winter. As far as December, January, and February goes, you can't expect to catch a lot of fish when you go. But the bigger fish, the cold weather doesn't doesn't bother the big catfish. What's your projection projection size wise? Can you tell by the way he's fighting? Twenty. Biggest one I felt. That's for sure. <laughs> they just feed. I can't explain it. They just. I guess they're so big, they must keep feeding to keep going. I need a fight. I haven't seen them yet. The longer you don't see them, the better sign it is. <laughs> Good sign. There it is. Oh, yeah. Better fish. Better fish. Boom. That's what I'm talking about. Yes. Woo. Hello, Kitty Kitty. <laughs> yeah. Yes, sir. Hell Much yeah. Better. Hell yeah. <laughs> There's a catfish for you. And that was a that was a great fight. Hit the shoot rod, the inline planer. 
Good stuff, man. Good stuff. That was a cool fight. Look at the belly on this guy. Yeah, he's fat. He's purring too. <laughs> cool. Now, yeah, keep Well, we're running bottom bouncing rigs. Some people call them Santee rigs. We're bouncing off the bottom. They got corks that hold the uh, hook with the bait off the bottom as they're bouncing along. And we're using multiple planter boards to get a good spread. And it's difficult to do sometimes, but you try to keep your speed anywhere from 0.4 miles an hour on up to about 0.7 miles an hour. And like I say, it's hard to keep a consistent speed if you got a lot of wind. Uh, we've actually got some wind this morning and had to uh, deploy a small drift sock or sea anchor, as some people call it and uh, we're using some fresh bait, some bait that I cut up last night and, and soaked in the catfish nectar. And uh, so far, the catfish nectar has come out on top with the bites we've got this morning. Well, I've been fishing this lake for 32 years this year, and uh, he's on. He's on. Virginia side of it now. It's split between Virginia and North Carolina. And I think one thing I like about this lake is it's so big. Um, it's got between eight and 900 miles of shoreline, uh, approximately 55,000 acres of water at full pool. Um, it's just so big, even on Saturday and Sunday when um, other lakes are relatively crowded you can just about always find a place that you can you can fish up here <laughs> all right another nice cat so paid all set so having a great day out here catfish nectar proving it Boom! Oh, to us. Another great fish. Come on! Yes, sir. Uh, get out of there. There is a planter board. He's took it underwater. Yeah. You get him? There we go. Woo! You can see this boy's had a few bullberry biscuits. Look at this. Look at the gut on this guy. Another nice cat. We're gonna drop him in and get back in the game. One of the most popular things about Kerr Lake, uh, also known as Bugs Island, is the amount of uh, opportunity for recreation here. Uh, during the summer months, it's extremely popular with boaters. Uh, anglers are here all year long. But one of the exciting things is, it is so close to so many uh, large cities that uh, it gets a lot of use. Uh, and that helps with 850 miles of shoreline. Now consider this, Richmond, Virginia Beach, Raleigh, Greensboro, even places like Roanoke and everywhere in between feed this lake. So there's an enormous amount of people from all those areas that come and utilize this lake. And fortunately, uh, it has enough of a wonderful fishery with catfish that uh, even with a lot of pressure, it can withstand it and uh, give people the opportunity to catch plenty of regular sized fish and trophy fish. <laughs>